Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Dragon Talk. That's right, the official Dungeons & Dragons podcast. It's happening now on the Twitches. I don't know if you know that, but we are here live on twitch.tv slash dnd. I am Greg Tito, and I'm joined by these amazing people. Todd Kenrick. Hello. From D&D Beyond, and... Adam Bradford. From D&D Beyond. They are beyond excited. You can tell because it's... Terribly excited. Five days of packs have not worn you down. Right. Not at all. <laughs> Energy is high. We're ready to go. I, I'm just wondering where is Shelly. Uh, me too. <laughs> you know what You well, know what she said? She said, I have a meeting. <laughs> and it was, it was the only time the meeting could happen was when Adam was here. So I think it's personal. It, I think it's it, actually that sounds very personal. I mean, I get it. When I signed up for this, though, she said she was going to be here. So... Yeah, I kind of feel a little bit cheated. I think uh, there's might be some some bad blood happening here. It's I'll, okay. It's okay to take it personally. I'll find her afterwards. <laughs> that's what a, that's yeah. what a professional would do. I Shelly think. never does it to me, so I don't know. Yeah, that's on you. Yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and uh, I feel bad for you and because of you and on you. Okay. So don't do anything on me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to feel bad on anybody. <laughs> nice. Uh, well, uh, we're going to get to uh, uh, a special interview with you guys talking about how it was like, uh, uh, I guess, the launch of D&D Beyond, because we talked to you and Leah uh, back when we announced D&D Beyond back in the spring. Yeah. Yeah, which was exciting. And now Very exciting you guys were like, we got so much work to do. And then now you're like, oh, my work's done now. Well, you know, <laughs> it's not done. <laughs> we're just getting started. Yeah, it's never going to be done. Yeah. Nice. In a good way. In a good way. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the mail, but in a good way. Yeah. It'll always keep coming. Yeah. Cliff Clavin style. I don't know. D D Beyond is not Cliff Clavin. <laughs> <laughs> D D Beyond is like something that is like a project project that will evolve into like a sized size nice little beast. I love that. Yeah. I want like a Tarrasque I can love and hug. Yeah. Like having to defeat. Yeah. Having to defeat. Yeah. yeah, surely that can happen. We need to talk to uh, uh, our friends at Ultra Pro. They can make that yeah. happen. They make the the fun little owl, owl bear dice bags and the mind flayer dice bags. Now we need a uh, Tarask. We yeah. can love and hug. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. All right. Well, we got to talk to them. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here listening and watching to us now. We can see you uh, going on here. Uh, oh, we got a mics are bad type situation going on here. Who's mic is bad? All right. What was is it? Mine. We're gonna uh, 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 pause for a second while we figure out what's what's happening. Yeah. We good now? A little bit of feedback. You guys, oh, okay. Everyone says woo better. All right, nice. Woo better. I like that. I love that there's a delay. So we were like crazy, like uh, 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 worried about what was happening just five minutes ago, but it was already fixed by the time we even knew about it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, Thanks. I agree. The shadow fell clearly attacked the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to my live streams all the time. That's a good. So, that's a good excuse. Yeah, they like that echo. The shadow fell. It's true. Echo, echo, echo. Yeah, it's that repetition. Orphan echo, echo, echo. Our friends at uh, uh, Geek. All right, Maze Arcana. So yeah, we had a really fun uh, PAX this whole weekend long, uh, culminating uh, I think with me with the uh, a live show. You guys got to see that, yes, right? Yes, we did. And yeah. there was also like a little uh, uh, commercial, not commercial, but a, a trailer for everything that was happening with D and D Beyond before it. Yeah, we're really excited. Yeah, yeah, the the trailer was really fun. Uh, we we didn't have a lot of time to necessarily put it together, but it's like I think it's the best example of like everything we're trying to do with the D and D. Yeah, because everyone knows it was going to be a great character builder and lots of compendium information. It's all searchable and spellless and monsters, but we're trying to make. D&D Beyond to be like this central hub for D&D and right. that includes stories from the creators from the people who are making D&D where we just sit down the, sit down and let them talk about what they love mm -hmm. and then also talk to the community like people like Holly Conrad and Chris you know I mean and uh Sorry, not Chris Perkins. He's not. He's part of the community, but uh, a big part. Yeah, yeah. But but like Jerry Holkins and, and and people from Maze Arcana and getting everyone together to talk about why they love what they love, and uh, that's what kind of D and D Beyond is becoming all about. Is well, it, it's it's also where it started. So for D and D Beyond, uh, in our offices at Curse, mm -hmm. everything was about the game itself. Hardly anyone had played before we really started getting into the development here. And I knew, having played for a long time, I, I knew just get them playing and get it, it will take off like wildfire. Right. And so that that's what we saw happen. And um, it, it's just really incredible as we've gone through launch to see how much the team has accomplished in, in a relatively short amount of time. 
and looking at what that means and what this tool set can do for playing the game. Uh, we're hearing a lot of stories about uh, how it is making that game management easier, which is what we set out to do, which is great. Mm -hmm. We know that we're uh, not there yet uh, in, in all the places. We are going to relentlessly continue to improve things. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, character management, character sheet, builder uh, changes and enhancements that will be coming in the, uh, the next several weeks. Ooh, and cool. we're going to be working on uh, homebrew races and subclasses and all of these things that uh, the community has been providing so much feedback we love hearing that we love acting on that and so we're going to be doing that in the next several weeks and as we were looking at this is going to launch as this tool set and this is going to be a great thing for the game we knew that a great thing for the game would also be to highlight what the game itself is about and and that is why uh, we looked uh, we were fans of dungeon life and uh, we said you know hey todd uh come over here and and start making some great original content and we're really excited to be offering that now nice yeah and one of my favorite parts of uh, uh showing the trailer in front of uh, uh 3000 D and D fans for in Benaroya Hall uh, uh, on Sunday night was uh, you know Jerry Holkins got some cheers and some uh, Holly Conrad got some cheers but then Todd Kenrick got a lot of cheers. Yeah, it's weird. There was like a lot of <laughs> lot of people. He Todd got Kenrick. a few. I mean, he still has to visit our offices, and I want to make sure that he can walk through the door. <laughs> like so, let's let's make sure. My that ego, yeah, no, my ego is uh, getting too big. Oh, nah, I see. I thought it was I thought that was a height joke for a second, but then no. But like in all honesty, he is really like tall. It, going to PAX and people uh, recognizing us either because our D and D Beyond shirts or like they recognize me from just the hosting that I've been doing recently, and people coming up from Dungeon Life and for D and D Beyond has yeah. been like really heartwarming. And and they're like the nicest community to like talk to <laughs> because like you have this in instant shared history. So like. I don't know. It's just great. Like I talk to people about their characters and like the campaigns they like and the videos they want to continuously see. Yeah. And PAX was really magical, and I wasn't expecting it. And uh, it, yeah, it just meant a lot. Did it warm it warm the cockles of your heart? It's, Did you? Yeah. No. Cockles. Yeah. yeah. What a word. Uh, <laughs> if if I had a heart, it would be very warm. <laughs> but well, you didn't grinch. You know, grow three sizes. Yeah. Yeah. No. It over is. the course, it's like yeah, there was this amazing cosplayer that had done like a. Jim Dark Magic cosplay. Oh, God, she's amazing. Yeah, I saw her at PAX East yeah. uh, uh, for like two years in a row, and I saw her on the escalators at, at the Washington State Convention Center. We kind of like passed. I'm like, oh, I know you. She's like, oh, God. And but she like added to her costume and everything. Yeah, she's amazing. For me, this all started with the stream of Annihilation. Annihilation. Yeah. And when we all got together and everyone's like, we all love D&D, &D, and it was just like friends hanging out. It felt like actually like when school is out and you're still in the building, and you feel like you'd have the run of the school. That was the stream of Annihilation, and to go to PAX and have everyone talking about D&D &D and being really open about it, that was, I don't know, that was really magical. Right. Like, I don't get overly sentimental about a lot of things, but that was, it was just a really profoundly awesome experience. So, oh, that's super cool. Yeah. I love that you use that analogy, too, because I feel like that's what the uh, I was going for the whole time, was trying to make it feel like, all right, the, the lunatics are running the asylum now, yeah. and uh, we, we can <laughs> we just have our programming that people want to see. Yeah, and we're all weird in the same ways. It's yeah. great. Like, like, all of us are, like, not necessarily incredibly social, but now we're very social exactly. together. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I know. I love that, too. Uh, all right, well, uh, we'll get more into the nitty-gritty of what you guys have done so far and how you're going to be doing more and uh, uh, the plans on the future uh, when we come back uh, from Unity. But I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what's happening in the world of Dungeons & Dragons, uh, and then we'll throw it to a lore you should know or a Sage Advice segment. I'm not really sure which one it's going to be. Who knows? You got, I don't think we've even recorded them yet. This is things that will it's happen in the future. It's just going to materialize. Exactly. Yes. We'll, just, we'll just talk about things. Um, but for now, I want to let you guys know on the on uh, uh, the the uh, both listening on the podcast format of the Twitch Hascon is happening the weekend after we record this. So uh, September eighth through the tenth, I will be there. Chris Lindsay will be there. Uh, I just remembered that Tyler Jacobson is going to be there. He created the art for the uh, Dungeon Master screen reincarnated, as well as a, a whole bunch of uh, all of our uh, covers. Um, he will be there uh, in in force. So. If you're listening to this on Twitch, please uh, come and hang out in Providence, Rhode Island with us. Uh, we'll play some Magic. We'll play some Dungeons & Dragons. It'll be tons of fun. Uh, I've uh, talked about uh, Hascon many times here on uh, this here Twitch channel, so I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing about it at this point, but it is going to be happening right now uh, in a couple of days. Actually, I'm leaving tomorrow uh, to, to fly on a jet plane all the way across the country uh, to Providence, Rhode Island. I'm really excited about meeting new people there as well as uh, seeing some, some old friends that I haven't get to see in a long time because I'm going back to the Northeast. Uh, go Red Sox.
That's all I have to say. Uh, but if you do end up going, not only will you get to hang out with all those fun people, but you also uh, get a uh, access to a wonderful uh, Hascon exclusive of me, My Little Pony dice, the dice tin uh, that are all pink and awesome. It says Friendship is Magic on it. I know I've got like five orders from people here in the building here who aren't going to Hascon. or like, you got to make sure you give me some. So uh, those of you who, be, who are going, make sure you pick up a whole bunch of those and uh, spread them around to your uh, brony friends because I know there are uh, a lot of you out there. Including me. Uh, all right. So, and that also has gone also times up with Tomb of Annihilation coming out in game stores on September 8th. That's right. Everyone will be able to start playing the story we've been talking about that we first introduced as Stream of Annihilation with all you guys. And that it will now actually be a thing that the rest of the world will be able to partake in and play. And I can't wait to hear about what happens uh, at your individual table. So, please uh, make sure to uh, hop into your game store. Get an co early copy and uh, uh, start playing because uh, there's lots of fun stuff. There's also lots of great D&D uh, &D Adventurers League content that was going on uh, simultaneously with that. So uh, go to your local game store, see what they got on the schedule, and definitely partake with all that. It's going to be tons of fun. And um, some of those uh, creators who have made stuff for D&D Adventurers League are now creating content that will be up on September 8th, timed up. Uh, uh, basically, like first day DLC is what my friend Chris Lindsay here on the D&D team refers it to as. Uh, fun stuff that's ancillary, that's not in the Tomb of Annihilation story guide uh, or in the adventure itself, uh, but is uh, new stuff that you can uh, partake in. There's a lot of really fun and interesting things, and that is with the Guild Adept program on the Dungeon Masters Guild. Uh, if you want to find out more about that, definitely go... Um, to the Dungeons and Dragons website, and you can find out more. I know there's a specific link in here somewhere, but uh, my friend Palin will put it in the chat here, so you can go and follow in all the awesome stuff that's going to be coming out this Friday. Gosh, that's soon. Very soon. I can't believe it. The thing we've been talking about all this time is finally happening. And that will be on D&D Beyond as well. Yeah, of course, yes. Yeah, yeah grab it there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there's a deal, right, if you had... Uh, gotten it ahead of time oh never mind we'll talk more about that <laughs> um yeah so all that content you can always grab it there uh as well as uh uh on uh our digital tabletops that we also have partners with so roll 20 as well as fantasy grounds you can check it out there uh speaking of stuff you can play at has gone dragon plus just recently came out and uh, uh the issue 15 talks all about it's basically the tabletop issue so we delve into betrayal at Baldur's gate which is coming out on october 6th 6th as Shelly would say if she were here, and she would also uh, uh, want to shill for uh, Dragon Plus and how awesome that is. If you don't know what it is, it's a app that you can download on your iPad, on your uh, Android uh, tablet or phone, uh, also on the web at dragonmag.com, and it's got uh, bi-monthly bi issues. Every two months we come out with uh, uh, new content that's all about stuff that's coming out in the Dungeons & Dragons universe. Uh, and so stuff from all of our partners. We had articles with you guys. We had articles with... Uh, um, uh, Wiz Kids, who came out with the minis, the Tomb of Annihilation minis that came out this summer. Um, and uh, this issue is all about uh, tabletop and uh, uh, board game play. So we deep dive into uh, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate as well. Um, and also, uh, just so you guys know, uh, 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 later on today, we'll also be having a Dragon Plus show. And in this case, we're having Holly Conrad, Anna Prosser Robinson, Chris Perkins, and Jared Knabenbauer. I think I said it right. Uh, we'll all be in this studio right here uh, talking at uh, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. Yeah. That would be awesome. I know, right? All of them, all here, because they were like in town, so might as well get them in. Uh, and uh, it's in the same time slot that uh, uh, Dice Camera Action has been, so we wanted to gotta keep it going as much as we can. Keep it going. Um, I mentioned Dungeon Master Screen Reincarnated. Uh, that's got the awesome art that uh, Tyler Jacobson did with the red dragon flying above uh, a city. That comes out on September 19th, as well as Tomb of Annihilation, the Dice Tin uh, that Curse Perkins showed off during the uh, uh, best live show, um, which you can check out, I think, on YouTube and on our Twitch channel as well. Good stuff. He came as uh, as that guy. He was a Sarak, in case you didn't you didn't see it. Yet. Yeah. And the costume was by Danny Hartel, uh, who also made the awesome Batiri Goblin costumes, uh, along with Holly Conrad for our Stream of Annihilation. But she, Danny Hartel, made uh, Chris Perkins' costume last night. And or I keep on saying last night. It wasn't actually last night. No, it wasn't last night. Danny Hartel is amazing, and so the detail good. work on that costume was fantastic. And even in Infernal, it spells Perkins. Uh, <laughs> Danny is just like. She's like a member of my tribe. I don't know how to describe. It. She's just your a people. She, yeah, she's my people. Her and Kali Conrad, like they're just the most wonderful, talented people, and they're just yeah, 
She did an amazing job on that costume. That was like Game of Thrones level stuff for both of them. I love that she, I don't know if you saw it on Twitter, but uh, she made his, his helmet on, modeled yeah. on his uh, <laughs> black ampersand hat uh, uh, that we had in the office for a long great. time. It worked great. And, I mean, how comfortable is it going to be if it's just a cap? You just throw it on. Yeah. That's. I feel like that's what a Sarah Rack has on his, uh, I think it's like actually a hat on Yeah, him. I mean, it might be one of those beer hats. I don't know. <laughs> With like souls on either side. Oh, man. <laughs> He's just drinking souls out of his this sto- so, The soul juice is so good. <laughs> I'm so drunk right now. Uh, so, uh, also, uh, something really awesome that's coming out, uh, September 19th is, uh, a program we're calling the podcasts of annihilation. So part of the streaming thing that we did, we got all these, uh, people who do video streaming and we got them together and they all were in the same area, but people who create audio content, uh, audio only, uh, uh, wanted to get in and they were like, oh, this sounds like a great idea. So Josh Peralt, uh, from the taking initiative podcast reach out to me and we got 10 other podcasts uh some of which we've had on this show before like god's fall and uh uh um uh what was the other one nerd poker we had dan uh, tepler from nerd poker as well the sneak read from the sneak attack uh they're all involved in here as well as encounter roleplay dungeon rats venture maidens dragon drunks uh shout out to uh obo crazy uh as well as D D for nerds you meet in a tavern and drunks and dragons a lot of drinking in in podcast audio land um we will be doing uh, two new uh, uh, podcast episodes with from all of these creators uh, over the course of that entire week, the week that uh, Tomb of Annihilation launches wide for everyone to play. Uh, so that'll be September 18th through the 22nd. Two new ones on our Dungeon Delve RSS feed. So if you're listening to this in podcast world, uh, we have another feed where we have mostly our live audio play. So this fits in perfectly there. Uh, we'll be doing two new episodes each day, Monday through Friday that week. So go in and check them out. If you're interested in finding out more uh, about Podcasts of Annihilation and the groups that are involved in it, uh, follow the link on there. But it's uh, dnd.wizards.com slash POA to find out more about that. I'm pretty excited about it because it's a great way to get uh, um, uh, other people who uh, are not necessarily video streaming but uh, have audio. And I think uh, some of them do a really great uh, sound effects and make almost like a, like a radio play. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, um, let's see, uh, BBC had wonderful radio plays, and that's what it reminds me of. Exactly. It's yeah, good stuff. Mind's Eye as well. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're really fun and really uh, passionate about uh, They'll be playing through their own little version of Tomb of Annihilation, uh, similar to uh, what people did here. I love it because it's almost like a microcosm of what's going to happen on tables everywhere around the, uh, uh, the country and the world as people get into Tomb of Annihilation. They did it all. Uh, they're like, what about this? Or I hope it's not what someone else is doing. I'm like, no one else is doing yeah. that idea. You had the perfect idea that's good for your group. Like, run with it. Everyone's game is always completely different. It's true. And so. it's, it's just incredible with these new ways to get the word out about the game and for people to get a little bit of a peek into hey this is how my game is at my table uh whether it is streaming itself or these podcasts it's just incredible for the game and uh, it's just contributed so much to how the game has blown up and and how it's become uh so popular and absolutely yeah, it, it's just a, a really big part of it so uh, it sounds like josh uh took a lot of initiative <laughs> reaching, reaching out, guys, and it's a it's a very good thing that he did. Uh, I, I think it's an incredible idea. I can't wait. Oh my god, that pun is gonna. That's just, a rough pun. Course. Yeah, you rolled a twenty on that 100% one. Percent dad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so uh, a little bit of housekeeping. I will be out of uh, the office basically for Hascon as well as next week, uh, doing some fun, exciting stuff in the Northeast. Uh, maybe you'll find out about what exactly I'm doing next year. Uh, but um, there will be no Dragon Talk uh, recording next Monday, uh, and uh, but we will be having Force Gray, uh, a new episode. I think Episode 7 will debut next uh, uh, Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, there will also be a Dragon Plus happening uh, on 4 p.m. Uh, D- uh, Bart Carroll will be taking care of D&D News at 3.30 in my absence next week. I'll be still with him uh, at 3.30 today. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, but then uh, he'll also then be also talking. Uh, I see also a lot throughout when I'm doing all this. He'll be doing Dragon Plus starting on um, what? <laughs> I just see pointing. and I'm like, oh, my God, things are things are terrible. Um, uh, we'll be doing a, a, in the Dice Camera Action slot. There will be di- um, uh, uh, another Dragon Plus starting up. And then we'll be back with Dice Camera Action starting on September 19th uh, with uh, Holly, Jared, Nathan, 
and Anna and Chris uh, starting up their new season three, and they will be in uh, Tomb of Annihilation happening then as well. Very excited about that. Uh, for those of you guys who need to get into uh, our Twitch subscriptions, they are now open. Uh, there's fun uh, chat emotes as well as badges that you can get into. Uh, uh, so uh, definitely check a look at that if you're interested. Uh, I saw a few people had uh, subscribed for number two. So that's awesome. I'm glad that you guys were able to do that. Your second month, uh, thank you for subscribing. You guys are the best. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. I think that's. I, I think I've talked enough. I don't, that didn't seem like enough. Now there's more. There's more on here, but I think we'll get to it uh, in the natural flow. So we're gonna throw it to uh, a segment. We're gonna do some uh, uh, some some bing bongs right about now, and then we'll dive in deep with you guys on D and D Beyond. I'm excited. Thanks, guys. Bing bong. Bing bong. <laughs> you know, no one actually hears the bing bong. Nobody hears the bing bong. What, what do you mean? The, the clicks. Did you guys hear the bing bong? Yeah. I well, no, them. they don't hear the bing bongs, but it's the it's like the code word to Ryan so that he uh, uh, adds the on the podcast. It just makes you sound insane. It is true. <laughs> does, it, does it make me sound insane? Do I sound bad? Is that what was happening? Was I fuzzing on the microphone? There was, was some issues with my mic where it was scratchy. Mm -hmm. uh, These are the mics that are the problem. I know. This is like Ryan's worth nightmare right here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Everyone's trying to wire to join Twitch somehow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Twitch has had some... some that's right. true, right? Yeah, makes sense. Crazy. I uh, man, there's some questions. I got a lot of questions all at once. I need to answer. Can, is there any water? How much time do we have? Uh oh yeah yeah. Do you guys have? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. We're still alive. Uh yeah. So we <laughs> we, should, we, should, we should get some water if we could. Huh? I don't care. Yeah yeah. Adam, uh, I'm I'm good. Thank you. So we're still live, obviously. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, th this is because we're doing like the podcast recording at the same time as yeah, doing the live recording, yeah, yeah. so it's, it gets a little bit fuzzy. But hopefully, people. And, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, I got a lot of questions to answer on that list, man. Sweet. That was crazy. We will get we will get into some of those, uh, I'm sure. But we don't do as much Q and A just because it gets a, it divulges into to that. Uh, but we right. should have you back on for another like, Q&A session because you're in town and maybe we'll do a Dragon Plus uh, 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 thing once. I would love to be back as often as you guys would like to have me. <laughs> That's all the time. <laughs> put, put up with me. <laughs> uh, I think there's some space back here. We can just put a tent right underneath uh, a Sarah nice visage. He could save quite a bit in this housing market from what I've heard. Yeah, That's yeah, true. I have feelings. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Greg has feelings about Yes, we have thoughts about this. It is a thing. We just got done with a Mike Merle's uh, game, and that was so fantastic and lovely because I have not gone to play instead of DM Thank for you, so Nathan. long. Thank you, Nathan. You are my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, I, mean, I try to uh, rinse these water. out. I mean, it's not that. Great. My wife, Megan, <laughs> my wife Megan, is my actual heart. <laughs> That's okay. That's, shout out to Megan. I saw her at the uh, 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 live game too. Oh yeah, she's fantastic. She is. Yeah, she's the best person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I married her. You may be biased. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. I'm not biased. <laughs> <laughs> you actually have a wife. It's like you didn't make her up. No, she's she's real. Her. I met yeah. the whole family on the escalator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was like the best. I meet so many people on the escalator at PAX. It's like there's ups, they're going down. It's you go, oh god. There was the uh, yeah right exactly. It was fun. I wish we had time to stop, yeah, but it was. I know, I know. I was like, I have words to say to you. Okay. <laughs> we were in mid meltdown stage with the uh, with the four year old who just wanted to be held throughout an entire busy yeah, I time. I kind of wanted be, to be held as well on the third <laughs> day of PAX. <laughs> Sadly, she couldn't She couldn't hold me. It was, it was. I tried to get her to, to carry me along. but Greg, I will always hold you. <laughs> well, thank you for that. I'll carry you around PAX. All right, I'll, I'll leave if, if I need to. I'll, I'll hold everybody. I'm, nice. I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm thank you, uh, uh, the Raveler, uh, for, for my bing bongs. It does make my day, too, even though we got some, some hecklers on it here. Uh, it, yeah. We like it. Uh, all right, so we are now back uh, for uh, – that was a really great segment. Wasn't that segment amazing? Did you feel like you learned a lot uh, from Chris, Matt, and or uh, Jeremy? I yeah, it blew my mind. Deal. <laughs> no, yes. I will never look at 5th edition the same way. It's true. It's like it was basically like a inception-changing, reality-changing type thing was happening. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It was like sense. a wish spell was cast. Yeah. And now you have the knowledge in yes. your head. You just like gained like four levels because of your wish spell. Che nice. Cheater spell. Uh, so I am here with uh, Todd Kenrick, Kenrick, Adam Bradford uh, from D&D &D Beyond. And uh, we are going to ask them all the fun questions about what it was like uh, to work together and how much uh, you d uh, disliked, disliked each other like from the beginning. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> uh, I could lead on that completely. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 
Yeah, I met Adam actually at the stream of Annihilation, and um, I was perfectly happy as a clam in terms of like Dungeon Life was doing really well, yeah. and we, we got like 20,000 subscribers in like two months, which is not normal for YouTube. And people like were really positive, and the, mo the longer the videos got, and the more in depth, the more happy everyone was. And I, and I met Adam, and I w I'm coming at it from this trying to teach people about D&D by showing how much you guys care, everyone mm -hmm. at the D&D staff. Like, there is so much creativity and so much art artistry and so much passion and ar articulation about everything that these are the best people to learn D&D from. Then I meet Adam at the stream, and he shows me, like, the best character builder ever. And he's like, oh, and you can search your spells and your monsters and all this stuff. And I always kind of cried because we've been hurt before. <laughs> True story. I a and I, I, I'm a very improvisational DM and also player. Mm -hmm. And to suddenly have this tool set, I, I can really roll with the punches. I, I'll write pages and pages of stuff before we run a game. Mm -hmm. And then my players will destroy all of that. <laughs> and I love it. Like, we had this town, and, and there was a green dragon who was, like, attacking the town. And their role was to save the town from the green dragon. But everyone was rude to them. And so they decided, no. Nah. <laughs> we're going to leave this town, and we're going to let the green dragon take over. And that made me so happy when we, we went on a different adventure. And that, that's all because of improv and having those rules and those monsters and those spells like like right for you and if you're an I improvisational kind of guy that is a, such a great tool and so it seemed like two halves of the same yeah. thing that we were trying to do nice yeah it does feel like it it, it uh I, I you don't have to remember stuff anymore in our age right like how many phone numbers did, of your friends did you memorize when you were a kid growing up, yeah. right? Uh, I mean, all of them. All That's of them. the only yeah. way you could talk to them, yeah. right? Especially, and you know, the ladies. <laughs> you were, like, you had those just etched in your memory. Right, they were, like, um, even before speed dial, you had it, like, oh, I can do this, like, in, in, in very fast. Right. But we don't have that, like, uh, memory recall anymore because we can just use uh, uh, search engines and just be like, oh, we, here's the, all the information that we need right now. It's, like, immediate, like, recall. And I feel like D&D &D beyond did that finally for Dungeons and Dragons where, you know, if you had a working knowledge of, of the books, Jeremy Crawford does this all the time where I'll ask him a question and he'll be like, oh, and he like pulls out the book and he pulls to the exact page and he like recites what because he, he knows the, the index of where that is. And what D&D &D Beyond did is gave you Jeremy Crawford's index. You basically are able to be like, oh, I know exactly. As long as you know the search term or the way to get to where you need to go. It's it's instantaneous. Yeah, right. D&D Beyond is kind of like we mapped Jeremy Crawford <laughs> and Mike Merles' brain, <laughs> and now it's searchable. We're right. 3D print them, and they're going to be <laughs> yeah, these yeah. constructs. <laughs> nice. um, no, yeah, it, it, it really, when we were starting to make this, the very first part of the functionality that we put out was uh, what's in the compendium, the spell listings, monster listings. I was running a game in our office, and it was just changing things there at the table. And we knew that we were on to something with that. And so uh, one of the reasons that as we went through the entire beta process, that went incredibly well, by the way. I almost want to clap for everybody. Um, we've, had, uh, we've had just uh, incredible participation. Uh, the community is extremely active. They're very passionate. They're very vocal. Uh, and we actually appreciate that a great deal. But during the first phase of beta, we released that content because we knew all of those rules were the foundation for which mm. everything else was going to be built. And so we put that out early and we got just literally thousands, if not a million, I, I can't remember how many posts we've gotten to, but um, just so many posts, um, you know, helping us groom that to where it needs to be. And uh, then from that uh, firm foundation, we went uh, into, of course, all the character management, uh, some of the homebrew things that we've been able to do. Yeah. And that really is in the, the near future. That's the thing that we're going to keep doing is it's not going to uh, the, the process that we're going through is not going to change. We're going to continue to pay attention to that feedback. We've heard uh, very loud and clear what the community is looking for and, and uh, can be better. Uh, what what is good and what's working. So we're going to uh, continue to take that. We're going to continue to very actively respond to it. We're going to make this uh, tool set something uh, over time that, that is going to be something that, that everyone that plays the game is going to want to take a look at. And the biggest part of that is that community and getting that feedback. So mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're you know terribly excited uh, about what that future is going to hold 
because we know this is uh, a starting point for us and we know that um, the, the Dungeons and Dragons community is so passionate and this game is something that we love so much that, that we want to see that uh, become uh, you know, what we have envisioned it to be. Uh, how important was it to have the homebrew content be uh, a part of D&D Beyond? Because the reason I ask is because I think the, 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 the fourth edition character builder, D&D Insider, was, was a great tool and people uh, uh, gravitated to that. Um, but it didn't have, you know, anything third party, anything that like people came up with in their home game. It just didn't support. And so, you know, there was this disconnect between what the community was doing and what uh, uh, was able to be supported. As, as we started out, we took that example and we saw, I keep hitting this microphone. I uh, use my hands too much. Everybody does. I do um, too. That's why I was like, I got to do this. <laughs> side. I, do, I use my hands. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as we started out, we looked at uh, the, the insider. I uh, played fourth edition. I, I had a, a DDI subscription. I remember that one of the limitations that frustrated me uh, very early on in that is, is hey, I can't uh, customize this. Dungeons and Dragons is a game that is structured make-believe, and so therefore people can come up with anything that they want to do. And so from the, the outset, we knew that allowing people to create homebrew content, that custom content that is, is going to be used just in their game was going to be incredibly important. And of course, right now we allow for monsters and spells and magic items to be created. Mm -hmm. The things that we're working on, our, our team is kind of uh, taking two separate paths uh, for development uh, in the coming weeks here. And uh, one side of the team is focusing a great deal on uh, character sheet and builder improvements. And we've talked about that a lot in our forums. Uh, but the other side of the team is going to be focused on uh, allowing those other elements that are really important, like feats, backgrounds, um, subclasses and, and races to be created as homebrew elements as well. Oh, cool. And then, of course, the other thing that's great about that is that after you create this incredible new type of elf that you want to uh, uh, use with your table and your party, you can then just turn around and share that with others. And so we're seeing this influx of creativity that's just absolutely incredible, things that uh, I go into the queue sometimes and just kind of look through what people are submitting uh, for that that public sharing and I'm just amazed at the creativity in the community and how incredible it is that people can just come up with this stuff and that they're using this stuff at their tables and that now thousands of other people could potentially use that at their tables. I love that. I love that because it's kind of was a spirit of Dungeons and Dragons yeah. from the 70s was that like there were there was the Judges Guild and there were all these people who kind of came up you know, making stuff, you know, even Ed Greenwood himself, like, adapted his his setting to be used with Dungeons and & Dragons. It was just like, oh, creativity was happening everywhere, and then, like, some parts of it became uh, a part of official Dungeons and & Dragons, and some of it didn't, but some of it was official at your table, and that was, you know, we talked about this at the top of the show, like, how that little shard of reality at your table is all that really matters, and I think D&D Beyond does a good job of of, uh, of serving those, uh, you know, all the different kinds of players out there. And that's the core of D&D, and that's, that's what fascinates me about it, because with all these other different types of art forms, when you have like movies or sculpture or paintings uh, or, or in writing, uh, what's great about D&D is like you have all these people who are like creating rules, creating the art, creating great stories, you know, Chris Perkins and Mike Merles and Jeremy Crawford and, uh, you know, Sean Wood and Richard Witters, this, this great team of people. Mm -hmm. And they put all this effort after years into a product. And then at the end of the day, they just hand it off to you to add the final and most important element. That's the most unique art form I can ever think of. Yeah. Because that, that's just that shared storytelling and that you're building this from the ground up with the idea of bringing someone else to tell their own story. Like every D&D book, every, every person has said, these are the rules that we've set forth. These are the monsters. These are the spells. But this is, this is your game. Mm -hmm. So do what you want to yeah. make it fun. If there's a rule you want to ignore, that's fine. This is your game. This You own D&D. &D. Yeah. And, and that's a lot about homebrew, and, and that's just what makes this game. This is why I get so passionate about the game. Yeah, this is like the ultimate art form for me. Because <laughs> you're not, I mean, we talk a lot about players and DMs and how you know they, they, they share different responsibilities. But in some ways, everybody who plays Dungeons & Dragons is a game designer, yeah. is someone who who. who, who brings forth their own imagination, their own reality. You know, just reading the books is one thing, but actually experiencing the, the storytelling around the table, it's it's a very 
unique experience. You can't get it really anywhere else where there's where there's minds melding in front of you. And you know, I want to have like a visual <laughs> of like whoosh, whoosh, know what your hands this kind of right rainbows. Now. Yeah, but but like rainbows. yeah, with well, <laughs> is the same way, and Stream of Annihilation is the same way. When you get to see your friends, like I don't get to see Holly all the time, but you're like Holly comes up and her Strix costume is insane. Yeah, like down to the slightest detail and she inspires me to make a want to make try to make a costume as not <laughs> I can't make one as good as hers but like I want to make my character but it costume. would be as as you as hers is you know what I mean like you would add your your yeah, flavor yeah, and course. your imagination and your funk to it but like everyone's doing their own thing and, yeah. they're, and, they're, and it's funk? so great I, yeah. okay. I've got well, I, so much funk I okay. assume <laughs> Strix has a, a trash wish kind of you know yeah. uh, flavor I, I to it she has Funk, but um, I'll, I'll have a uh, funk warlock. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. Actually, Greg knows the character idea. But, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be pretty I know. Upsetting. I love that Horizon Walker idea. Yeah, the Horizon Walker, and I've got a you know, crazy guy. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, stuff. It, it's not. Um, you know, I won't act like it has been an easy thing to develop. Uh, this digital tool set around all of these thousands and thousands of, of corner cases that and, will and always arise. Exceptions and, and, and all these things that happen. Yeah. But on top of that, we kind of want to give that to the community and allow them to create things with it. So that that's difficult as well. But it's a path we want to take and we're going to continue to take that because that is what Dungeons and Dragons is. Right. And so, uh, you know, it's really important to us and uh, that we allow people to have that control over their experience at the table. Neat, neat. Now, we talked a lot about your background of, of playing the game from the game last time, but I don't think, Todd, we've ever really heard from you as far as when you started playing. Oh, my God. This is where the, where the interviewer becomes the interviewee. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. I like, <laughs> as you know, it's like when my intros we to videos are very minimalist. camera minimalists. right here if you, you Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, pretend that you're behind the camera right now, and that might make it feel a little bit better. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so, yeah, when did you start playing, wh and why did you start playing? I started playing, I, man, I was one of those kids who just didn't talk, and I imagined all the time. And then my brother started, started bringing the original D&D monsters, I mean modules. Uh, and uh, I mean, like Alt Barrier Peaks, like we were like up in it. We were like super hardcore, and I, and we didn't have a lot of people to play with. Mm -hmm. And back then, you make a character, it died, uh, <laughs> because that's how hardcore it was. Yeah. Uh, but I read every module over and over again, and the monster manuals and the fiend folio. I read them over and over, and they would create stories in my mind. And that artwork, and then like third edition with you know Elmore's art and, and stuff like that. that it, it meant so much to me because I was always writing my own stories and like even like novel size stories as a kid and it became like this great infrastructure for to teach me how to kind of get into this aspirational I want to be a Tolkien type writer mm -hmm. and it, 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 it that level of inspiration especially when you live in the middle of nowhere right and and, and you'd have a hard time where did you grow up again I <laughs> outside of a town on a farm of a town of like 2,000 people. So like I am out in the woods, <laughs> oh my but, God. but it gave me this great imagination. And yeah, that's probably, yeah, it, it contributed to it the was, fact that you're like, oh, like, I could go on these adventures. I, I could like, go into the mountains. I didn't like cartoons. I love D&D. &D. Interesting. And, and I was, I like the D&D &D What about the, I was just kidding. Yeah, you go. <laughs> had to like that. But so that was really important to my brother and I, and we get excited. And, you know, that was always a birthday birthday gift i'll never forget him he got me the tomb of annihilation which the wild maid shows up for the first time and i was i mean no the t not uh, the tomb of magic no he ran me in the tomb <laughs> he ran me in the tomb of uh, horrors. horrors yeah that was a rough day uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but the tome of magic had the uh, the tome of the, magic had yeah. the wild mage and wild magic and it like and all the players handbooks were like elves and stuff like that this is D and D was just so magical to my childhood and growing up, and it never left me. And it clearly had a, a massive cultural impact. But, anyways, fast forward. I'm, I'm talking for a very long time. This is why it's good to. I, you need to be. You know, I your story must be told. When I go to bed, my wife knows this. I daydream every night until I fall asleep, and it will be about my character yeah. or something I'm going to be running for our group or live streaming ideas, right. and the d d is just a fundamental part of that. Because you went into, uh, so I, I'm sorry if I'm, yeah, but you, you, you were in video games for a while. Were you doing reporting yeah, for I was that? Yeah, I was the editor-in-chief at NBC for all the video game coverage. Okay. I had an on-camera show called In Game, and we were really popular at the time, and I got to cover video games, but 
Um, <laughs> was that like 90s to 2000s? Not 90s, not, it was about seven years ago. Okay. This is like when G4 was around too, and we were kind of like partners okay. and, and all that stuff. Uh, but I kept on wanting to do a D&D show right. so badly, and I talked to Jerry Holkins about it. But NBC was like, you're lucky to even have a staff <laughs> covering video <laughs> games and mainstream media. Right. Let's, let's uh, not go overboard. And you have your own show so right. and a studio. So, that, like, <laughs> you s- slow your roll or whatever you want. <laughs> like, right. calm down. <laughs> whatever uh, was appropriate yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, 2010. Yeah. I, I had pushed all the edges. Uh, <laughs> and, and that was really fun. But I really wanted to do the D&D show. And it, it didn't happen. But then I got the opportunity, a, a, you know. Last year, yeah, I came in to interview you guys, and I didn't know what was going to happen. Right, and I talked to you guys, and I'm not blowing smoke up at anyone's butts. I met Chris Perkins, and I'm like, oh my god, this is my person, uh, <laughs> because he's instantly like, uh, one of the best lines he gives is, that "There's two reasons D and D is doing really well, and none of them are me." <laughs> And he's so self-effacing. Yeah. He's so – he just wants to make stories, and he has so much passion for the game, and he has such a good heart, and he's just an artist. And everyone is like that. Like, I love talking to Mike Merles about hex blades and the mechanics, and, like, Jeremy Crawford can, can go, like, PM about Arcane Archer and why something is successful and not. Mm-hmm. And having these conversations – were gold to me and there were I realized this is what I wanted when I was five or eight years old. Right. I wanted to see videos of the people who are making D D talk about what they love and when you see how much they love it, you get it. Yeah. It's the second closest th- best thing. And the best thing is playing D D to learn D D. But watching any of these guys talk about it, you just get it. You like understand and mm-hmm. and and, and I love doing it, and maybe it's a, just a big fat excuse for me to hang out with Chris Perkins and Mike Merles and Jeremy Crawford and Liz and all of you guys and you <laughs> and uh, you know. And sh- but Shelly, screw that, Shelly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Shelly about her. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shelly and I will talk about Avalon Hill. I don't get to see Shelly that much, right, <laughs> but, right. but she like, just ditches at the last minute, right? Because she's got important meetings to take care. But of. it's scary too, because when you when you're faced with that much passion and people who are so well spoken and care about the community so much and take it like to heart, yeah, uh, I have to meet all, meet all of the halfway in terms of quality, and that <laughs> that can be uh, scary. Yeah, but it's, that's my that's my job. Like I have to, I, I want to bring the best out of all of them and give them an opportunity to talk, talk. And I love the the integration because I wouldn't have put two of these two together. It was Adam, you were the the, the genius behind the idea of uh, taking what. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's give let's call. It, yeah, all right, let's call it what it is. I mean, I'm, I didn't say genius, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you said it. But no. but like, I mean, what Todd was doing with Dungeon Life and D and D Beyond, I wouldn't have put those two together because well, it's like, oh, these are digital tools, you know, made to help your your tabletop game with things that are about the tabletop game, and then putting them together actually it makes perfect sense. Well, and, and the reason that we have gone down this path is in my own story with. World of Warcraft, and I remember I would unfortunately have to go like work a job during the day back yeah. when I played World of Warcraft. I, I would Those have preferred to stay at home and just play World of Warcraft <laughs> or, or, or whatever the game was. That there, there have been others, but um, with that, I would play the game itself, but no game can be played like 24 hours a day or 16 hours a day or however uh, much you're awake for that day. But I remember I would be at work. Don't tell my former employers. Um, <laughs> but I would be at work, and I would be, I would be on sites looking at things that have to do with World of Warcraft. Yeah. I would be uh, browsing the armory and, and dreaming things about my character. I would be uh, trying to find videos about, uh, you know, Ghost Crawler back in those days. And all, all these folks, uh, you know, saying things about that game that I love so much. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I wasn't really doing this for Dungeons & Dragons because that kind of content just didn't really exist, yeah. uh, you know, several years ago. And what is happening now with Dungeons and & Dragons and all the content that you guys are producing, like this right here uh, on, on the Twitch channel, uh, everywhere else, things like Podcasts of Annihilation happening, all of these things help people to live in that world of D and D, even mm-hmm. when they're not playing D and D, and and that's it's it's just such an important thing uh, that helps people, especially people that just have it on their mind all the time. It gives them that outlet outlet to do that, and so that's what we want to do for D and D Beyond. We want people to be able to use the tool set between sessions, prepping for those sessions. We want them to be able to use it at the table. 
We want them to be able to use it when they're in the supermarket and someone is arguing with them. I don't know who this someone would be, but would argue with them about what, you know, uh, DC, uh, you know, uh, what type of save a fireball is. You know, they can look it up like Gosh. right on the fly. You if know? I had a you nickel, it, it happens all that. the time. It happens <laughs> all the time to me. Now, Every uh, time a cashier has tried to say it was a D8 and not a D12. Man. That, that, that's exactly right. So you can find that on the fly, but you can also, as you're sitting there in the supermarket and you're waiting on your wife to finally get done with with whatever is being bought, um, you can you can watch one of those videos that that we're creating and, and that Todd is you know pouring his heart into, and I, I think that's the thing that that's that's your audience that you're going for is guy who's <laughs> bored waiting. It's the opposite. It's my wife watching the videos, waiting for me to get done making a decision <laughs> to buy something. <laughs> She's researching her warlock and her sorcerer class, nice. and also like thinking about the commissioned artwork she wants to do. Right. So. Well, I'm glad you mentioned because I, I was that fan of, you know, video games and the, and the aughts when I had the, the day jobs and things that were like that. Yeah, that's all I did. I, I, I was a, a huge forumite before World of Warcraft even came out. I remember that's what I did. And I remember I actually even got in trouble with one of my former employers because they're like, he's just playing games. And I think I'm like, no, I mean, no, I am reading about games. Reading about games. Yeah, there's a really key difference. Big difference. I here. mean, did Nathan know about this before they hired you? Did, uh, that's how you this, was, this, this, was, this was this was when I was with the Rothschilds. Oh, okay, uh, uh, an actual real company uh, <laughs> who did real stuff, uh, uh, but uh, but also inspired many D and D stories in my brain. So uh, uh, you know, I, I can't I can't. But, but it's good to get paid for what you love. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it, I good. also, I mean, I can tell them now because it's many years. I also wrote lots of uh, uh, fourth edition D and D material. Uh, as well as video game articles while I was employed at somewhere else. I also filled time writing uh, and creating, and then th that slowly became where I am today. <laughs> I, I'm coming at this from the other place of, like, I was doing this for free, <laughs> and then I got hired to do it, well, that's, yeah. which is great. It's like, uh, we'll pay you to do this. I'm like, cool, because <laughs> I would still be doing this, <laughs> as Greg knows. That's true. <laughs> like, I would just do this. Uh, and you eat Cheerios for the rest of my you life. You found your niche pretty quick when you were like, I want to interview uh, uh, this team uh, f specifically because of, of, of I mean, we, oh we also man. came from the like, video I game world I where it was hard to like hard to pick a real story out of um, uh, some people you interview sometimes. And, oh, and, yeah. and, and uh, you're right about the D&D &D dance. Why I love working here as well is because they'll just tell you stories about how it was designed, how this worked, why they chose this and not. Uh, very unprompted and very honestly, and that's it, that's it, really refreshing. It's not always marketing speech, right? It's, and it's so never, you, as far as I can yeah, tell. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. that's the thing that we're really going for. Um, even as uh, we hired Todd and we started talking about what this was, some of the people that heard this was happening started thinking, "Well, this is going to become some kind of marketing engine for D&D." That, that's not what we're interested in at all. We yeah. want to tell the story of D&D. And we want to uh, be, uh, you know, this trusted third party that is telling this story that people can come and, and really, you know, tune into that and, and see what happens. We're living in an exciting time, especially if you like Dungeons and Dragons. This is an incredible time to be alive. Uh, it, it's just it's so much steam is behind what's going on with d and It's becoming this, this phenomenon in mm -hmm. the culture. And we just want to kind of document that and, and show that and, yeah. and highlight that and let people come to that and see how incredible it is. And uh, again, like it, it's, you know, a big part of that is they can they can hang out. It's a destination there on D&D Beyond that whether they're playing or prepping for a session or if they're just wanting to be connected to in some way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've had conversations, too. I don't, I don't know why I always go back to this stupid analogy in my brain, but like, Woodstock, the Woodstock co concert, nobody really would have kno I mean, known about it or had the cultural impact if there wasn't a documentary about it, if there wasn't something that showed what it was like to be there and, and talk to the people who were, were in that situation as well as the performers and the and things. And I feel like that's my job. That's what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're documenting what it's like to be to be in the room, to be to Woodstock be talking for D and D. Yeah, I like yeah. Exactly. I, I just love connecting with those guys, and they've. Um, I'm glad I'm not a journalist anymore because they quickly became family, uh, at least friends. <laughs> Maybe some of wow. them are family. I, I don't know, Todd. That might no, no, be no. Blood, blood brothers. A lot of them are friends. Some of them are families. They don't, they don't know it yet. <laughs> Mike no. didn't act like a family earlier when he was killing your character. My character's not dead. He's oh, unconscious. He okay, okay. Uh, first off, no. Yeah, no, he's going to be okay. I, th uh, I think Nathan's in the chat using the D and D handle. Uh, I see you. I see you, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> and I do use. I have used that analogy to you before. Dang it. 
Uh, um, but but I, I know some people have asked, uh, just in the Twitch thing, people are like wondering where Dungeon Life is going, and Dungeon Life is now basically on D&D Beyond. So like all that content you saw me working on uh, for so many months so passionately, that format's not changing in any way. It's just going to be on D&D Beyond, and I just wanted, I thought it was the best thing for us to put it all in one location. So as you can go ahead and see on dndbeyond.com, those videos are exactly the same feeling. And I'm going to expand on that. Like we're, we're tackling Shadowfell and Alignment and the Feywild and, and the D&D multiverse. And, and not only that, just asking Chris, like, what does he get excited for? And mm -hmm. like Mike Merles and, 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 and talking to people like Holly Cr Conrad, who's like my favorite person because I have like a 10 year career with her interviewing her and, right. and watching her career path and, and people like Anna Prosser who have like great advice from Dice Camera Action. Dice Camera Action is one of my favorite shows because it, it really is just a group of friends goofing off and having fun. Um, these people are invaluable to talk about and they're like great ambassadors to like drawing people in to understand like you don't have to be afraid to play D&D. &D. Yeah. Like I get that anxiety. Just do it and you will like suddenly see the magic of it. Are I think that when you were talking about it being like a special time for Dungeons and Dragons is because, you know, there were all of these roadblocks up for you wanting to playing to play in the seventies to the eighties to the nineties where it was like, you know, the, 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 the social stigma that you could potentially get. There was the difficulty in really understanding the rules or or knowing how to build your character yeah. and things like that. And then now with fifth edition, I feel like we're removing a lot of these roadblocks to just, you know, get exactly to the core of uh, telling imaginative stories with your friends uh, around a table or, or, or uh, you know, uh, around a, the virtual table, as it were. And uh, uh, you guys are a part of that. The streaming is a part of that. I think, you know, the, the documenting, the, the story is a part of that. And uh, it's, you're right, it is very exciting. Well, not, I mean, not to rehash, I, I, I think Mike uh, said in an interview that I read not too long ago, yeah. the baseball analogy, since you like baseball so much, Greg. Um, but, I mean, seriously, if you handed someone a baseball rule book oh and God. told them to just go play baseball, it's going to be incredibly difficult. I'd, I'd be really interested to, to, if someone in the world didn't know about baseball, we could do that and we could run an experiment and see what that looked like because it wouldn't be what we see as baseball. Yeah. And so that was a problem that Dungeons & Dragons had for a long time is – it's just hard to take something that you can't see and then translate that into something that you're doing. And so with all of the live streaming and everything that's happened there uh, and the podcast and everything else that uh, where people can actually observe others playing this game, that's how I really learned to play Dungeons & Dragons. That's how I learned to DM as I, I went down to the friendly local gaming store and we crawled up to the not very hygiene uh you know hygienic place like up in the, the <laughs> attic where, wherever they they played weekly it was you know? a dungeon yeah, it, it was, was a, there was sure cobwebs it was a, and yeah it was it was something but um you know, in the corner crawling up there and uh you know getting past the you know unique smells and everything that that would accompany that i i just watched people play for for the longest time and and then you know jumped in and started playing and that's how you really learn and now we just have that uh, roadblock like you said it's just removed and yeah. people can see that in such a, a simple and easy way uh, that it, it's been a really good thing for the game nice um, so uh, you know with D&D &D Beyond out there in the wild uh, uh, what do you say to folks who may already have their D&D &D books or, or, or you know like creating pen and paper uh, uh, actual character sheets you know wh wh what about them I, um, I, I'll go on record right here and say that I, I love the books themselves. I have stacks and stacks of every book on my desk uh, at my office. I think I have other copies at home that are on, on, uh, <laughs> on uh, a shelf somewhere. But I, I love those books. I'm going to continue to get those books. I'm going to thumb through them. I, I, I like the look and feel. I think what D&D Beyond is doing is, is sure, we're offering books. Uh, you can get these books in a digital format. But it goes, oh man, am I gonna use a beyond pun right here? It goes beyond that um, oh. into, um, it's going to, to just allow you to not only create characters, use that character at the table. I was using a, a character earlier, uh, some kind of Yuan-Ti wizard in Mike's game and I stayed alive while Todd did not. Um, but um, or because he I stood stayed back conscious. way in the back like a glass cannon, only without Except the cannon part. I killed part. everything too. Mm. Uh, but <laughs> any, anyway, so so, so ultimately, uh, you know, playing with that character uh, builder in the sheet, 
it during uh, an actual game is one thing, but preparing your sessions in between games, even with books, if you like the physical books and, and you want that look and feel, it's just incredibly valuable to have that with you at the table to be able to look something up very, very quickly. So I think that uh, I don't envision a world where these books are going to go away. Like I, I think people are going to continue to like these books and, and want these books. Mm. But D&D Beyond is for those players who are, are wanting convenience and, and to be able to do things easier. I've got a 12-year-old a son that plays D&D, and he can already type faster than I can. He can uh, – he can absolutely destroy me on Overwatch. Um, you know, uh, this is this technology is something that he is just growing up in, and it mm -hmm. is complete second nature to him. He is going to be able to find a spell on D and D Beyond so much faster than he's going to find it in a book. And you do have Jeremy, and you have uh, you know, in general, I can flip to the the right page. You know, uh, typically when I'm at the table, table. but, um, but I, I think there's really something for everyone here. And I think that's what's great about the hobby at this point in time and, and the game uh, where we are. There are so many options of how you right. can play. And we just think that D&D Beyond is a way for you to play the game. Uh, if if you want to use that technology at your table, it's, it's a perfect outlet for you to be able to do that. Yeah. It's a great instrument to play music basically like like if you mm. want to think of that in terms of an analogy yeah, this is the podcast there's a of analogies today wow. sorry yeah. but there's oh, yeah. a lot of different ways that you can make music and this is one of those ways and th that's the way i like to to play my D D. yeah like quick fast improvisational and my players are nightmares to like i don't even try to steer them <laughs> And I love it. That makes me excited because me writing a story at home is boring. Right. Them writing a story with me is the best experience. It also like just melts my brain after five <laughs> hours. <laughs> oh but gosh, you're never more tired than after dungeon no, mastering. You don't know, even know. You don't even know what happened sometimes. Like I, I talked to Terry Holkins, and he's like, sometimes I don't even know. I don't even remember the last five hours. <laughs> it's a complete blur. I mean, is that because of D and D or some That's other reason? There's That's some D &D. other. There must be some other reasons. <laughs> no, uh, I, the Mike and Ed spores was getting into them. Uh, I don't. I don't want to catch a lot, but like, I have to thank everybody who's been helpful for uh, getting Dungeon Life where it was, and then getting me to D and D Beyond and introducing me to Adam, like Anna Prosser, Holly Conrad, Danny Hartel, uh, uh, Jerry Holkins, the entire cast of the C team. All of you guys who gave me a chance to interview you guys, Mike Merles and Jeremy Crawford and Richard Witters, you guys have all been really amazing and given me a fantastic advice. And Matthew Mercer, of course, mm -hmm. and the entire cast of uh, uh, – they're, they're all such giving people in the D&D community. And if you ask them for advice, they will give it to you in the most honest way, like Talos and Jaffe and all those guys, Liam – I don't know. I, it's just shocking. Sorry, I'm listing a lot of names, but, but <laughs> this is like an Oscar speech. It, it just, like, no, 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 it's, yeah, it's right a horrible there, Oscar like, speech. But it's just like <laughs> I'm. I was never like I've been a journalist for like 20 years. I was not prepared to be confronted with this many with a, genuine people, actual emotion of, of people who like actually care and are yeah. empathetic to, to I others. I was kind of a jaded video game journalist for 10 years, and then you're just like, oh, everyone's nice. I think I, a big part of that too is. Uh, one of the things that we've talked about quite a bit, I keep hitting the microphone. It's right. um, we, we've talked about a great deal that we want to highlight these creators. We want to highlight uh, these uh, you know, prominent people in the community that are, are doing things on live streams and, and elsewhere. We also want to take the opportunity as we go to conventions uh, you know, in 2018 and looking forward to that, we want to uh, take a side where we're able to do others in the community, people that are just showing up to a convention to play an Adventures League game. We're really looking forward to being able to get the thoughts of the, the community as a whole as well. So we, we really are trying to you know, take this really wide stroke on yeah. this is D and D, and we want to show that to, um, to, to others. So we're really excited. Uh, if you see us at conventions, uh, you know, in the next several months, we we might say, "Hey, what you're doing here is really really nice. Let, do you mind talking to us for a little while?" So we're we're looking forward to that as well. Nice, and we're I mean, you know, we had uh, uh, Mark Holmes from uh, Yogg's Cast and Uncharted Territory uh, uh, that they're doing it with High Rollers uh, from the UK, and of course Dragon Friends from Australia. But we're thinking about expanding beyond, you know, D and D beyond beyond, uh, you know. 
the, the, the borders uh, and making this truly worldwide. I know we have like uh, uh, international translations coming down the pipe from Gale Force 9. Right. Um, and I'm sure there's some ways, well, those will interact with, with uh, yes. uh, D&D Beyond uh, in the future. Nothing to super announce right there, but yeah, like, you know, no, there, there's no ways that things may yeah. happen. Um, but then also events. I mean, I think we're open to going to, to all over the place. I know uh, Jeremy Crawford goes to Luca in Italy. Uh, as well as lots of other I go to that areas. Next, I want to know. I, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, basically yeah, yeah. This, is, this is me just saying I want to go uh, uh, <laughs> to that a, too. It's a beautiful city, and then they do like hardcore cosplay there and oh, everything God. else, and it's yeah. It yeah. sounds amazing, uh, but I love that idea that like Curse is now can 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 uh, uh, show D and D beyond all these places, not just in the continental United States, but all over the world, and people can jump in and figure out how to how to how to play. Absolutely, you know, and make yeah, it as easy it, as possible. It, this is like, and it's, not, it's something I try not to think about, especially with us, uh, <laughs> but. But um, because you have to get on a long plane ride. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I am terrified that. of planes and I'm claustrophobic. So, uh, so anywhere by train so that you can go, medication. trains. Trains are okay. Trains are okay. Sometimes being interviewed is really claustrophobic. I mean, how, does that, but how does that cost? Like, you know, could could I get you on a train to come to Huntsville, that Alabama? Was a long or? time. That was yeah. a long train. But think of all of the ride. work editing videos he could do oh, uh, on the way. I think you we're getting you a really good laptop now. Try to get me into trouble, <laughs> but there's we're gonna send you to Australia. But you have to go, you have to go through the Bering Strait, and it's gonna <laughs> handle, handle like the this, this oh. like that will get you there or something. Oh yeah, uh, that I'll won't be I'll claustrophobic or wheel. I don't know. I think a sea tunnel will make me feel at home. Submarine, <laughs> and, like comes some kind of Cthulhu weird way. <laughs> uh, but w- what's really impressive, and I think everyone who makes D and D is aware of this, but like. 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago, D&D got made. And now look at all the people who are dungeon masters who are making content today. Mm-hmm. Everyone on Game of Thrones, like this, the, the showrunners were DMs. Uh, several, several of the writers were dungeon masters. You, know, you obviously shows. have Vin Diesel and all these other actors. And we have a lot of actors who don't still talk about it, who are famous, that play d and I believe some people at Blur Studio. And, and when you look at the power and influence that happened 40 years ago, yeah. what we do now with fifth edition, what, the people we invite to play D and D, and how we talk to them, and how we invite them into the game, in the most honest way, will affect pop culture for forty more years. Right, and we have to keep in mind, like, what, how can we keep that going, that going? and what kind of art is going to be made because of this massive swell towards D and D right now. And I think I know that's a very grand and grandiose way of looking at it but it's a very true way mm-hmm. and 40 years from now we'll look back at this moment with fifth edition and everyone who worked on D and we're going to be like we contributed to that and the community did too and that's going to be i think something r- really amazing man that's pretty profound Sorry. I didn't think about great power comes great responsibility. I just thought we were doing a silly podcast here, but <laughs> apparently we're shaping lives. I mean, we can make it. We can make it silly. You want me to pick you up in there? <laughs> <laughs> Do some body slamming. I can carry it an unusual amount of weight. So well, <laughs> <laughs> your encumbrance level is very high. It's really high. It's that farm boy crap. Nice. It's all that stump digging. Oh right, stump, stump digging. <laughs> twenty five cents. My parents paid me twenty five cents per stump. Dude, D- that's a lot rich. of work. Yeah, I didn't get rich. I know, it's crazy. I, there's not a lot of work in Well, I mean, at least got. you got paid. My kids have to do that kind of <laughs> stuff for free. Did you have five acres? <laughs> so, like, here, you much. can play D&D Beyond a little bit <laughs> for an hour. And the, you that's know, your reward. The biggest inspiration is, like, m- my wife learning D&D and getting excited about D&D. I, like, she tells me exactly what video I should make. Like, I see, like, explain, because I've been in it for so long. Yeah. And then she's learning it, and she's asking all the right questions that I would never ask. Like, I'm just kind of almost dumb, right, because I've been playing D&D since. Well, you can be too close to it. You can be just yeah, so much into it home. that you're like, oh, I don't know if anyone's going to find that interesting. And yeah. they're like, you know, I mean, me, I only came in here about, you know, two and a half, two and a half years. I was about the same thing, too. I was like, you guys should be doing this. You should be doing this. And I think a lot of people were like, oh, Okay. I guess, yeah. right? And so, yeah, there's there's a part of that where a fresh perspective is, is very important. Oh, I think we're getting so a key. lot of that now because we have so many new people who are playing for the first time, picking up that player's handbook for the first time. And you're right, infusing their own ideas and their own personalities and their own imagination into it. And uh, who knows where that's going to be. Even in five years, it's really hard to, to predict. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fantastic. I love, like, my group alone, I love all of them. We have one person who's super hardcore, one person who's completely new, and one person's kind of in the fence. And like seeing them evolve Are and learn about the D&D. fence or in the fence. I want them yeah, to yeah. be a part like of the fence. The, they'll maybe be part of the fence. Kinda, it's a, it's a, they it's got whitewashed in. 
<laughs> but like watching their different, you know, different ways that they're learning D and D and what they're gravitating towards helps me sculpt the videos. Like talking about the Shadowfell and the Feywild and giving you like a structure of what the Forgotten Realms is. I know it, but like so much has changed. Yeah, gotta bring that together. It's true. Create a cinematic universe for everybody. And that's, I mean, I mean, uh, childlike awe that people have around what Dungeons and Dragons is and what the lore is 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 something that uh, I wish more adults could cue themselves into. You know what I mean? Because uh, that's that that imagination, that sense of play is. I mean, I, I don't know. You're a parent. You've met other parents who are not quite so. Uh, uh, imaginative or gamer like and <laughs> isn't there like a little there's like a little light lost between their I mean, eyes they don't have that sparkle anymore you know not to be overly dramatic but the world would be a better place like, it would just just straight up the world would be a better place and uh and i, I think uh one of the first times i, I talked to um uh chris perkins he had mentioned something about that word wonder and and it's just a really important word and i, I think that that's what this game deals in mm -hmm. more than anything. I, I, you know, when uh, some of the groups I've played with uh, over the last couple of decades have lost that sense of wonder, and it's become uh, a little bit of a chore to play. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. with, with with that. But I think that where D and D is now, and where so many of these players are, I, I don't know if it's entirely because of the influx of all these new players or or, or what it is, but. Wonder is something that it just makes the game so much better, and it's the thing that once you get it, and once you play a D and D game that just clicks for you, you're you're gonna just immediately recognize there's no other game that can really top this. You can't play a board game or a video game that can make you feel the way that this does. And it's yeah. that one-on-one -on -one connection again. You're you're unplugging. It's uh, and I love video games, but with D and D, you're unplugging. You're looking at each other. You're you're making a connection with your friends. You're together. You're laughing. You're having fun. And you're mm -hmm. telling a story. And you can't replace that. And there's so many different ways that helps people. Yeah. Like it, for people who have social anxiety, it provides them a structure to explore that and like maybe kind of you know not not heal. I don't think heal is the right word, but like it, it, it gets you used to a group and talking to people on a regular basis mm. and stuff like that. And I've known people with PTSD who playing D and D has helped them. Not only because it's an escape, but it's also it's giving you a context with structure again. Yeah. When something like that happens. I suffered from PTSD a long time ago and D and D hanging out with my friends playing D D honestly helped me because it just got me to just have fun, imagine a really cool world, and that helped me significantly. Yeah, right. And it's helped a lot of other people I know. Yeah, and we've talked to uh, uh, people on here on the podcast, Wheel House Workshop and uh, Dr. Book Matza and his work with Take This. And I, every, every day I get more uh, people saying other things in other ways. And it's, I, I love the, the delicious irony of uh, uh, being a child of the 80s and having my parents not want me to play for all these reasons. They're like, you're going to not have any friends. And, <laughs> and, and, and you're, you're casting fells and no call. And, and I'm like, no, all right, that's not happening and no at all. Career. And no career. And no way. career. Yeah, there's not, not like there's a money in it or anything. And you're like, oh. Uh, I proved all of you guys wrong. And, and this there's, is there's not a ton of money in it. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, come on, we're rolling in it over here. What do you yeah, think? yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. We're, um, we're eating. But I mean, but, and and I, I want going back to what you said about wonder and and uh, uh, the helpfulness that can come from the game, and just circling it all back, like removing the roadblocks to play is one thing, but then also that what I like that does is it just zeroes in on what makes the game fun like it zeroes in on the wonder and and the imagination and the storytelling and it removes all the parts of like oh wait what was that spell uh, you know like what's the range on that oh no you can't do like you know like changing getting all the, getting all the stuff out of the way so that the uh adventure can happen now, obviously the mechanical stuff is important it is. And, it, and it creates a framework because of reality mad at you if you said that it wasn't <laughs> but um but no but no. even he would say that like yeah, yeah it, it's all it about is. at the table and the, and the cool factor of what's it, happening it is really important and of course that's what uh, that's been our driving force behind D&D Beyond the entire time is that it's a convenience. We, we, want to, we want to mitigate or remove the negative aspects and impacts of the rules and then let you know, the, the good parts, the positive parts of the rule shine through right. where the focus really can be on that imaginative, interactive storytelling. Uh, that cooperation between people trying to overcome something like we were earlier and I lived through. 
So, um, <laughs> and, you know, and, and the thing, like, th- honestly, like a lot of people ask me, like, why did I take the job at D and D Beyond? And it was a hundred percent Adam, because I met someone else who you cared. Are a genius. Easy, easy now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I I met somebody who honestly care, cared about the game as obsessively and as much as I do, and was working as hard on it as I I did, and he just got it. And then I was like, of course, I want to work with Adam. And uh, I am very picky. I am not known for praise, except for apparently on this podcast. You've been very effusive with oh, your praise. But, but, uh, yeah, but uh, kind of don't worry. Yeah, when you, no, it's when a, you meet me in person, yeah. There was something in the water that Nathan gave you. <laughs> yeah, I don't, Nathan, <laughs> I love you. No, uh, <laughs> no. no. Uh, but but love seriously, potion. like I met Adam, and I'm like, he gets it. He, he knows what this needs to be and what it's going to become. And he has a plan and a vision for that and how it's going to affect how we play video games and make D&D better. Yeah. And that made me excited. And, and the fact that he's just like, you never have a boss tell you this. Uh, yo, i just like to hire you and just do what you were doing. <laughs> and I'm just like, uh, sold. <laughs> like, how do you Done like, and done. I will keep doing. I'm my own worst boss, though, and I think he's already clued into this. Like... I am way harder on myself than anyone else is going to be. <laughs> so you're you're a rough uh, a rough dungeon master for yourself. Uh, yeah, I am the worst dungeon master. master. I, am, I am stuck in the tomb of annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> you have the death curse. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got all the curses. <laughs> so now you know what to do when you're like, you know what, Todd's really disappointed in you, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, that's the, all I have to say. The boss Todd inside you is mad. The boss baby that's been boss Todd. boss baby. <laughs> I feel I like you're like a krang. You're oh, like a krang. Yeah, krang, baby. or maybe like a quado. A quado. Yeah. Because he's like the krang. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah, quado just well comes out too. and he's just like bad edits, bad color correction, bad video could have been longer. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You went on and on with that. Didn't that you? is good. <laughs> that was a very good impression. <laughs> Total Recall, my friends, watch it's classic. I like that those were all like on you know uh, message video cu- uh, notes that you've given yourself. <laughs> the color correction was off. He's one of my go-to. He's one of my go-to people <laughs> for like when I'm running a campaign for pain. pain. I love doing pain voices during our live oh, live stream. You like the darkness? Yes. I oh, was born in it. Oh, what was that? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was improv, man. I, 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 yes, I haven't and. studied yes, Bane and. Uh, in the uh, mirror yet. Okay. I was born in the darkness. You uh, merely adopted it. That was pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it sounds horrible either way. So. <laughs> no, I, We're I, have do, a Bane I do it to my off. cats. We always make our cats talk like Bane. <laughs> like, anytime you would like to give us food, you let us know. <laughs> <laughs> what, has happened, it's be right. what has happened? And then I don't know. It's off the rails. It's well, it was very emotional. And now it's very uncomfortable. So I, 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 I want it to be. A you did say act. you wanted it to be more fun. I'm not sure if we're there yet. <laughs> as long as the cat ends up breaking your back at the end, then I think it's a good story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. yeah, clearly yeah. a calico cat just needs to walk in, and, <laughs> and then the whole movie is ruined after that. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for stopping by. I know you're not going to be uh, here too often from Huntsville, Alabama, but I'm glad that you were. Um, and uh, we want you up here all the time. So you got to come in and, and, and give some managerial uh, meetings to, to uh, Todd. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Pretty all easy for me to justify uh, getting to this city. So <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll work. I don't like that. Nice. And we'll be seeing more of you. Uh, you're more than welcome to come on the podcast whenever you want. You Maybe invite you... me anytime and I will come talk Jesus to you about s- Bane accents. Stand back here. Yes, exactly. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll do the ring. Like, how big, how wide is the camera angle? <laughs> I'll just do the ring girl Don't thing in the corner. No, 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 the Blair Witch thing in the corner where I'm just like. Well, your head is just. The <laughs> we should do that once when Shelly hasn't come in yet, yeah, and you'll just be in the corner. <laughs> and then oh, you can do a Bane Shelley. voice. I know, this oh is so good. Oh, my God. Little does she know. She never watches these, so she'll never know that yeah, we were making like, fun of her the whole oh, time. She, she just kind of does it and, and never comes back, right? Yeah. She's got, okay. yeah, she, she doesn't like hearing the sound of her own voice. Oh, Uh-oh. I hear it too. Okay. Trust me. Like, I'm I'm like the one on camera reporter that never wanted to You're be like, on, don't camera. Put me on camera. No, please. I don't, don't want to be an anchor. Stop uh, it. Do I look like that? I look like a frost giant <laughs> who can't shop. For That's clothes. why you hired him. That, that makes perfect it. sense That's now. Yeah. I forget how huge I am. I, I took a photo with me and Holly Conrad. I'm like, I am a monster. <laughs> Because there's like <laughs> Holly and she looks amazing, and then my jaw is like the size of her torso. And totally. I'm like, oh God, shrink me down, please. She has a spell. <laughs> she has she a spell. She can do it. Yeah. She has a spell, probably. 
that Jim Dark Magic doesn't have. Exactly. That was the best moment, so. wasn't it? Oh, that uh, I was so ready because I know how he is. For those of you who don't uh, know what we're talking about, you should go watch the uh, video on demand for uh, the PAX West Acquisitions Incorporated live game. It was tons of fun, uh, and uh, I, I thought that the, 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 the preamble with you guys in there was amazing. Uh, uh, I loved it, and I'm excited that uh, uh, everybody is now able to jump in and do D&D Beyond, and we can't wait to hear about what's coming down the, down the pipe. There's still development happening, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, a lot, yeah. lot more uh, to come uh, in the in the near future, as I've talked about with character management. Um, Homebrew, we're, we're blowing that out and making sure that uh, people can customize their layout changes uh, with, with the character sheet. That, uh, again, we've gotten, we've gotten so much feedback. We'll continue to act upon that. And uh, we are also going to, I believe this month, start a, a little bit of a fireside chat as well. Who need? Um, on, uh, that we'll uh, host on a live stream that will, will allow people to ask questions. And I will answer those questions or I will, you know, uh, nimbly dodge those questions that I can't quite answer. Uh, you know, the, the, the dance that has to happen. But uh, I think most people who have been involved in our forums and who have seen uh, what has uh, gone on to this point are aware that I actually am pretty transparent. And so uh, it's going to be a good opportunity for people to come and ask those questions and to uh, to hear from the horse's mouth, as it were. I can see right uh, through. Yeah, yeah, it's something we got to do. We like People want to hear from you and hear, like, you just know. So You know it backwards and forwards. You'll, you'll be hearing from, from me, uh, you know, nice. on at least a monthly basis, probably. That's well, what we'll, so you're, we'll you're stealing start. Nathan's uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. A monthly section. I like yeah. that. It's a good idea. I, it's going to be way better than Nathan's. I'm going so to do, my, I'm gonna do a, dra <laughs> a dragon side chat where it's yeah, just fire. But no, but I think... Uh, once a month, I want to reach out to the community and figure out what kind of videos they want to see moving Ooh, forward and what kind of photos they would like to see, and like that, that kind of media and content that they would enjoy. And I think I'll do a similar live stream once a month I just to it. connect with people. And, and uh, again, connecting with fans has been um, cool. The most emotional and unexpected thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I am a very quiet person. person. I'm not here. Uh, <laughs> when there's not a microphone in front of you. Yeah, then I'm very quiet. Nice. Uh, well, cool. That's exciting. I like both those things. Can I throw some uh, some questions at you that you can Absolutely. practice with? Absolutely. All right. So uh, when is Dragonlance coming out? <laughs> well, you know, we have heard that the community uh, is, is very interested in Dragonlance, but we don't have any plans for it at this current time. If we what about Dark Sun and Planescape? When are you going to do Planescape? Planescape. And I love this shirt. Absolutely love your shirt. Thank you for asking this question. We have no news that we can share at this time about <laughs> oh. any of those settings. I like but that you made sure, it personal. But be sure to check out Tomb of Annihilation that takes place in the Forgotten Realms, available on September 8th. When are we getting Hollow I World? <laughs> when are we going to go to Gamma, back to Gamma World? When are we going back to Gamma World? Athos. We need to go to Athos. Oh, right. But we do have things There's coming out. Fun, We've yeah. got all videos about Tomb of Annihilation this week, leading up to the launch. That's right. Yeah. And then we're going to have a video about Idol of Champions. And then we're going to have more content about the D&D multiverse on a whole. And then I'm talking to Mike about videos specifically about classes and subclasses. And well, you know, I, I, I don't know if have heard about this um, book that's coming out pretty soon called Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Oh, my oh. God. So we're going to have uh, quite a bit of video content. We're, so we're going to have, really excited. like... Yeah, 30 to 50 videos about Xanathar's <laughs> Guide. I am so excited. I am. People I, wrote down those numbers right there. Yeah. They're, they're going to count them. They when, will. Yeah. I saw. I also saw that artwork, and I was, like, skipping. Like a child at so five happy. years old in the 30s. I'm like, Xanathar's. <laughs> like, I'm so excited for so many subclasses. You had different. your culottes on. It was like. Oh, <laughs> my God. I'm so excited. Yeah. And I love Beholders. And that, that, that drawing, I mean, that painting is just, like, uh, that's, that's my soul. I love the Xanathar. The goldfish, right? That's no. your soul animal. The beholder oh. is definitely my soul uh, animal. He's my totem. <laughs> That's why I am inside. I'm just a big, a large brain, beholder. A large beholder and just lies. It's in your stomach region, and it's like the crane. <laughs> That's where the pizza goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adam, how can people find out about D&D uh, uh, &D Beyond and also where you are at on, on the line? Um, we can go to we. I go there all the time. I don't know why I said that. You can go to dndbeyond.com. Check it out. Uh, we are fully live. You can go on there. You can use the tool set. You can see all this great content we've been talking about. And I am at Bad Eye Adam on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Well, I am, uh, well, yeah, go to DND Beyond. You will find all of my video content. We have a YouTube channel, and we also put all the videos up on Facebook for DND Beyond. 
I also have a fan page, and I am just Todd Kenrek, not Kendrick, Todd Kenrek, <laughs> on Twitter. If you ever want to ask me a question Can about you spell that, please. Uh, K e n r e c k. It's a Welsh name. I apologize. You're about to get Ken wrecked. Oh, That's how you remember. God, it. you keep doing is. this. This, but well, there's no T at the end. Dang it. There's no the T. But like somebody made a mistake when we hired him, mm-hmm. and it was like. Ken wrecked. Everything about interacting with everyone from D and D is like interacting with everyone who is like tenured, like Stranger Things. Like <laughs> we're all the cast of Stranger Things <laughs> at that age. But yeah, yeah. So I'm Todd Kenrick on Twitter. Hit me up. Send me a message. If there's a video you would like me to see uh, produce and stuff like that, send me a message. I would love to hear from you. Yeah. I, I love talking to the com- the community of D and D. So. Right. Um, do it. You know, and like Megan, they had that idea. We're like, oh, you should. I don't know. I was always confused about this, or I, you know, tell me the more of the story of, of you know of these two gods and why they're like this. So like, yeah, yeah wife, anything. My way of Megan is critical <laughs> to my intellectual process of developing. Like, what videos should we make? She is, yeah, she is amazing. Sorry, I can't shout out enough about my wife. Megan. <laughs> wow. Me, me, Megan is. Uh, I, I feel kind of bad. Like I need to say something about my wife right now. No, it's too late. H- We're out honey, of time. I really, really love you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so genuine. <laughs> She's going to be like, oh, she, he really does, she, I she think. Knows. We, we, we've got a rapport. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You've got a rapport. That's good. It's good <laughs> to have a rapport with your wife. Usually. <laughs> it's, it's overridden. Um, <laughs> I just say that because I know she's not listening. Uh, Bye, everybody, and your Love husbands. Your wife, everybody. Mostly your husbands because they're terrible people. <laughs> and your familiars. Your spousal units. As, Love as, them. as referenced yes. Love by your us. Owl, owl bear. Love your owl bear. Yeah. Give them a big hug. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, this has been amazing. Uh, usually we do like a long outro with Shelly, but she's gone. So this yeah. is it. This is the outro. You guys got it. And uh, you can follow me. I'm at Greg Tito. Uh, ask me anything that you don't end up asking these two fine uh, gentlemen. Uh, but then, of course, you can find out anything about Dungeons & Dragons on DungeonsAndDragons.com. Uh, you can also download the latest, latest issue of Dragon Plus. It's issue 15. It's on DragonMag.com. You can check out all the content there. Uh, or you can get it on uh, your Google Play or iOS uh, under Dragon Plus. Fun stuff is happening there, uh, and uh, we're excited, and uh, we'll be back next week with more Dragon Talk. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Three of the four members, uh, or cast members, well, I guess four of the five cast members of uh, Dice Camera Action coming on here uh, with uh, Holly Conrad, Anna Prosser Robinson, Jared Knabenbauer, and Chris Perkins will be occupying these very seats, uh, speaking to Bar Carroll, who will be an inanimate object off screen. Yay. 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 But before that, uh, we'll be back in five minutes with Dungeons and Dragons news and get you everything you know that you may not have already heard. <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna. I'm gonna get more coffee because apparently I need. I, I need more. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You seem. You guys are the best. Any, yep. any parting wishes to everybody here on the on the Twitch here? Uh, thank you guys, everyone, for your questions and comments. We love you guys. Keep them coming. Uh, feel free to send us messages anytime, and, and it, regardless if it's critical or not, that all helps us make a better product and better videos. So we love we love it. We love you guys. We love you. Yes. For sure. And we'll do maybe more Q&A kind of things with Dragon Plus with you guys at some point uh, as well because I think that makes a lot of sense to get some direct thing to the community. Or maybe we'll just host your fireside chat and we'll call it a day. That might be easy too. It's wonderful. I love it. All right, you guys. uh, We'll be back in a couple minutes. Stay tuned.